Hey, what's going on, Game Weepers? This is Coach Eggs, and in today's video, we're going to be revealing the 15 best champions for patch 12.12. .12. The alleged changes that will probably hit the rift, they got released on Twitter today, so we're going to be going through some of these champions that got buffed or maybe nerfed. We're still going to be OP in a week's time, so you know exactly who the best champs are going to be to inflate your elo. And that's what these lists are going to do. They're not going to improve you as a player, so to actually improve and become the best player you can be, check out the description and comment section for the Game Weep website, because I challenge a players and coaches are uploading a bunch of Von Analyses champion courses and guides every single week. Whether it's something to do with micro or macro, we have it all and it's guaranteed to help you improve. So check those out down below and let's get into the video. Now for these 15 champions, these are not going to be in order of how OP they're going to be. These are just going to be 15 champs who will be broken. You guys maybe in the comment section can try to figure out and discuss who you think is going to be the best of them. So why don't we start with a champion who's actually getting buffed in 12-12, this being Ivern, and I can't remember the last time I mentioned the Vern in one of these videos, so this is kind of exciting. And for Ivern next patch, you're losing less HP from your passive. Also, your passive's base mana cost is down to 30%. Your E shield is also increasing by 10 in the early game to 30 in the late game. And on top of all of this, Daisy is getting tankier. So in terms of Daisy's base HP at every stage of a game, and also her resistances are going to be higher as well. And to be honest, even at the moment in 12.11, Ivern is a very underrated champion. Because the meta is shifting more towards an AD carry meta, where they're becoming a lot more important, if you're playing Ivern, you are like that second support who is going to protect the Zeri, Twitch, Vayne, the hyper carry AD carry that you see so often at the moment. So Ivern in 12-12, going to be a great champion. Now next up, we have the Monkey King Wukong, who is not getting hit at all in 12-12, and this is a little absurd because he's so strong at the moment, even if he got nerfed in 12-11, he is still killing it with Divine Sunder and Conqueror, and because none of these are getting nerfed, Wukong has to be in consideration once again as being easily the best jungler and one of the strongest champs. Now moving on to another champion who is avoiding nurse in 12-12, this is Darius, who is really shown to be one of the best champions in the top lane because of the new meta shift. It's very hard to beat a Darius in an extended trade, which is really what's happening most of the time now because of the durability meta, and that's where Darius thrives because of his passive, his stacking, and his all-around DPS and dueling capacity. And because some other top laners in this patch are going to get nerfed like Dr. Mundo, Fiora, Singed as well, Darius really stands out as one of the premier picks in the top lane and in the game itself. Now the next champion on the countdown, this is Zeri, who at the moment has one of the strongest win rates, particularly in higher elos, because of the changes that came in in 12.11, where Zeri's damage got increased, and even if her mobility utility may have been nerfed, it's turned her from one of the worst champions into arguably the best. But in 12.12, she is actually getting nerfed. So your W's damage, even if the base damage is increasing, it's scaling less off your total attack damage. So this is going to hit your scaling as you start to build more AD into a game, but Ryder actually giving you more health regen and health regen growth. This is going to help you sustain yourself during the laning phase and during team fights and in the mid to late game as well. If you get hit by some sort of long range skill shot, you will be a little more healthy when the team fight actually starts. So all in all, all you're copying is just a W nerf. So this is definitely a worth trade off and we'll still see Zeri be really strong in 12.12 .12 as well as 12.11. So that's why she has to be in this video. Now one support who loves supporting a champion like Zeri, this is Yumi who's actually getting buffed in terms of her healing in 12.12. .12. So you're shielding your passive, this is increasing in the early game by a little bit, but increasing more as the game progresses. And for a scaling champion, this is awesome. For your ease base heal, this is getting decreased in the late game, so these are really adjustments more than anything. But Yumi at the moment is such a good champion because of the strong AD carries, like I mentioned Zeri, we've got Twitch, you've also got a champion like Vayne, so these hyper carry ADCs, the synergy they have with Yumi is unreal. And in 12-12, this is going nowhere, so that's why she has to be mentioned. Now let's switch it up and head to the top lane here and talk about Jax, who, well, is isn't getting nerfed, and his items aren't getting nerfed either, so in terms of Blade the Rune King, Divine Sunderer, none of these are getting hit. Even if Mora Malmordia, Steph's Dance got nerfed last patch, these haven't changed anything. Jax is still an absolute titan in the top lane because of lethal tempo, the attack speed, pair this with your passive, pair this with Blade of the Rune King. Even if tanks got stronger in terms of Barmy Cinder going down in gold, and also the tank mythics giving them more HP, this is really good for Jax because you love shredding them. Blade of the Rune King, the DPS, Divine Sunderer with the Spellblade passive, so Jax once again will be super strong, no reason to stop playing him in 12-12. Now another champion, there's no reason to stop playing, this is Senna in the support role, and thankfully in 12-12 there are no nerfs to Senna, so last patch you did get nerfed, your Q's slow, and also the duration of the slow, Umbral Glaive also got nerfed in terms of the vision passive, but because your Mistrave spawn is up, this helps you if you're supporting as a Senna, because if your AD carry dies and you're farming a creep wave on your own, if you're farming the mid wave in the mid to late game on your own, you're going to get more stacks, and of course this is just so good in the mid to late game. Also with Eclipse, Senna is still a very 
very strong champion, the armor penetration is this, adds even more scaling to your kit, so she's still going to be one of the top tier supports and champs in 1212, just like Renata. And for Renata, just like Senna, no nerfs to her or her items, really good news, because she is one of the most innately strong champs we have at the moment because of how good her kit is. It's so good for the best AD carries at the moment, like we mentioned with Vayne, Zeri, Twitch, these attack speed based champions who really love it when they have a support next to them who can peel them. Think of Renata's ultimate, think of her W, think of her displacement in her Q, think of the shield in her E. There is just so much power in this kit, especially in this durability meta, so she has to be mentioned as well. Now moving on, a season 12 top champions countdown of course would not be the same if Vagar was not on the countdown. And because next patch Vagar is not getting touched, even if he was in 12.11 in terms of his base armor and his E's cooldown, in 12.12 there is nothing to worry about, which is great news of course. Whether you're playing Vagar in the bot lane, in the mid lane, the champion just has so much much power still. Even if Everfrost got nerfed, and like I mentioned, the actual direct nerfs to Vega, he is still killing it in most elos. The power you still have with your cage, which is the same cooldown at rank 5, so at level 13, and guess what? You're going to be getting to level 13 in pretty much every single game, so this nerf didn't really impact Vega. and of course you have your Q stacking, your damage with your ultimate, and hopefully a full combo. Even if it is a less bursty meta, it's just because Vega is so incredibly strong in the mid to late game that even if he is a burst champion, he still packs a massive punch, and that's why he's going to continue to be an S plus tier champ. Now, speaking of S plus tier champions, let's head back to the top lane and talk about Olaf. Now, the recent hotfix nurse to Olaf actually hit him quite hard, but not hard enough to take him off this countdown. So those hotfix nerfs to your armor reduction in your Q going down to 20% and the shield HP ratio, this got reduced as well. So it hits you a little bit in the early game, not too much, but it definitely hits you in the late game. And because games are going to last long, this has impacted his win rate by quite a bit. So why is Olaf still on this countdown? So why why is Olaf still here? Well, his win rate in every single elo is still above 51-52%, and because his early game is so strong, maybe the strongest out of any top laner, especially if you're running something like Ghost and Ignite, if you can land an undertow, especially with the increased base damage from the original 12-11 patch, your kill threat is so, so high. So I don't want to say it's impossible to lose lane on Olaf, but it's extremely hard to do so, and because you're going to win lane most of the time, this will convert into a one game. So 12.12 Olaf still going to be really good, just like Red Cat. Kane. And for the Ras version of Kane in 12.12, nothing to worry about. Just like a lot of these champions on this countdown, there are no direct nerfs. Indirect nerfs, awesome for Kane. Because you're a champion who is about durability, this meta could not be better for you. So with Conqueror, the healing you're getting from the buff Gore Drinker from 12.11, the healing you're still getting from Death Stance, whether you're building more of Malmordius, Black Cleaver against tankier compositions, which is probably going to be the case in most games, this version of Kane is just frothing the meta at the moment, and it's impossible for me to leave him off this countdown. Now, one champion who's getting buffed in 12.12, this might come as a surprise to a lot of you. This is Seraphine. And a bit like Ivern, I can't really remember the last time I mentioned Seraphine as being OP, but she's going to be. At the moment, even with Leandru's Anguish, whether you're playing her as an AP carry bot lane or in the mid lane, so I'm not even talking about support Seraphine here, she's very underrated and just strong. And in 12.12, because your E's cooldown is decreasing to a flat 10 seconds, and this is generally better because you will be maxing the second. So for the first 10, 11 levels, this is just a straight up buff and what what they're also doing is increasing your ease CC duration. So on the slow, on the rude, this is massive. And because you're a support champion who relies on utility more than a lot of mid laners who might rely on damage, having more CC is great for Seraphine. I would just recommend picking her when you have some carry champions on your team. So you might have a jungler like a Graze or a Kane. You might have an AD carry like a Twitch or a Vayne who would really appreciate the CC and the peel you're going to give them. So watch out for the buff Seraphine in 12.12. Now, thankfully, this next champion isn't getting buffed. This is Yone in 12.12 because he's already so good in 12.11 and like lots of the champions we've already mentioned, Yone is not copying any direct, indirect nerfs. So he's still going to be a beast in the mid lane in 12.12 and the reason why he is a beast is because he just scales so well. Like name a champion on this countdown who doesn't scale well. That's just how the meta is and because there are lots of mages who are strong in the mid lane at the moment, Yone does well against them. He has high kill pressure, especially once you hit level 6 and because there's less bursts in the game, the chances of you actually dying in the first 1 to 5 levels, which is really when you're most vulnerable this has gone down heaps because there's more HP in the game, more armor, more magic resist. It's really nice for you. And once you get your Q's cooldown down close to 1.33 seconds and you get to 2 to 3 items, you are going to be unstoppable still in 12.12 .12, as well as the rest of 12.11. And another champion here, once she gets to 2 to 3 items, who is going to be so good in 12.12 .12, is Diana. And if you're going full one shot mode with Diana with Rocket Belt, where the magic penetration got buffed, which is nice, gives you a better power spike, or if you're going the kind of off tank Diana, where you're getting an Ashes 2 for D. DPS first, and then you're getting Sunfire Aegis because this got.
got buffed. In 1211, 100 extra HP. This is a significant buff. Diana can really make use of these. You still deal easily enough damage because of the Conqueror stacking the DPS you get from Nash's Tooth, working with your innate on hit damage. And then with Sunfire Rages, this stacks up during the course of a team fight. Remember, team fights are going to last longer. So the immolate passive on a champion who wants to get her head in there and be amongst the enemy champions, it really is a great time to play Diana. And that's why she's in this video. Now, the last champion we have to mention, guys, this is an AD carry, and we have mentioned him in this video because the supports we mentioned, like Yumi, like Renata, they would love to play with Twitch. And for Twitch over the weeks and months, he's received a lot of buffs. And because at the moment, the durability is about getting to that late game with lethal tempo, the stacking you get for the attack speed and the extra range, pair this with your ultimate, it is devastating. And because the bot lane, generally speaking, is less scary, because engaged supports are a lot worse, so Leona, Nautilus, because you are going to get to two to three items in most games, and that's when you can just take over. So Twitch is the final champion, guys, on this 15 champion list countdown video. Let us know in the comments your thoughts on the list. If you think another champion, maybe Belveth might be a good shout, Dr. Mundo might still be good, you might think Fiora might still be good. Let us know down below in the comment section. And if you did enjoy the video, please remember to leave a like down below. And until our next season 12 upload, this has been Coach. Newsletter.